If you've got half a brain cell, you know that this equals entitlement. You got makeup on like a woman, and yet you got a scruff. Um, mm -hmm. So I want to define success here. Like, what does it mean to solve this mystery? And I am not a better person. I've never claimed to be. So I'm going to explain why these things aren't human, like all narcissistic assholes. Let's get into it. Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Trauma Pond HQ. My name's Olivia and this is where we sit by the pond and we have a little chat. So today is Easter Sunday, a time of remembrance when Jesus died on the cross. Now, if you're not fully familiar with everything to do with events in the calendar, Christmas and Easter are generally the two big things that we celebrate the remembrance or awareness of Jesus. It's pretty much only those two. I mean, there are a couple other ones, but you know, you don't get holidays because of it. If you want to be greedy, then we may as well just be greedy. These things are exceptionally greedy, but in particular, I'm going to talk about this thing. And who is this? Well, this thing, like I said, I'm not a better person and I don't pretend to be. This man has decided to change himself and turn himself into a Rachel badly. At the very least you can do is make yourself look feminine, you know, like do better. At least make me want to call you a woman. But you haven't and you don't, so I won't, okay? Rachel decided that she wanted to create the Trans Day of Visibility, which started apparently 15 years ago. But apparently today is the reason why it's so big because it falls on Easter and it has actually fell on Easter several times. But since the last time that this particular day has fallen on Easter, things have gone a little bit more back crack crazy. And I thought I'd just go through a little bit of this, if you will. So NPR decided to do a piece on Rachel and talk about how he created this day. Trans Day of Visibility began 15 years ago and the founder is still moved by its success. This Sunday, people from Kosovo to the Netherlands to the US are organizing events to celebrate the transgender and non-binary community marking the 15th year of International Transgender Visibility Day. Yep, this is happening. Its founder, Rachel Crandall Crocker, a psychotherapist, that is so concerning, and the executive director of the non-for-profit group Transgender Michigan still can't believe it. Mm, yeah, and the rest of the people who are mentally well or intelligent. Rachel says, it's absolutely amazing to see how far it's come, she said to NPR. I wasn't expecting it to start an international movement. Yeah, well, well, I mean, it's very easy to get a movement like this up and going. All you have to do is just slap LBGT on it and where you go. More than 1.6 million in the US identify as transgender. Yeah, I'm gonna say most of them are mentally ill or have uh, cluster B personality traits, but that's just what I'm gonna leave it with. Hmm. This weekend is a celebration of trans people's rights. This weekend comes as trans people's rights have become increasingly restricted across the US in recent years. Have they now? Have they really? Several states have passed bills restricting banning of gender affirming care to trans youths. Yeah, that's a good thing. And there has also been a wave of legislation against trans athletes and drag queen performances. Um, do you think maybe it's because the trans athletes are men competing in women's sports. Do you think maybe that has something to do with it? You know, the amount of injuries and discriminatory things that happen towards women. Maybe that has something to do with it. The feminist movement started because women were fighting men and now men are fighting women and now we have to do the fight all over again on a same level. Not saying that I'm feminist. I just can't believe how much of a backflip it's done. And as for the drag queen performers, um, yeah, it's okay to not let children be surrounded by tucked panties in children's faces. Huh? Huh? In 2009, Crandall Crocker wanted to be the reason for all people to come together and feel joy with other members of the trans community. At the time, the only holiday he knew, you've got a lot of fixing to do before I'll call you a she, was gathered towards trans people that was of a trans remembrance on November 20th, dedicated to honoring the lives of anti-transgender violence. Mm. The idea turned into the International Transgender Day of Visibility, which falls on March 31st of every year. It's very interesting that you chose that particular date considering it is slap bang in the middle of Easter. It's also during Ramadan. So everything else has to be shipped off and completely dismantled because of your entitlement. This isn't even a belief, this is entitlement. Mm, it's funny how the tables have turned. 
So Crandall Crocker says, I wanted a day where we could focus on living and where we could have rallies all as one community all the way around the world. Okay, so I decided to look into this. This is how many LBGTQ awareness days, months, weeks there are. These are all the special days, the special weeks, the special months dedicated to the LBGTQ community. So starting at the top, which is in February, you have a Romantic Spectrum Awareness Week, and it starts the first full week following Valentine's Day, beginning on Sunday. So you have a week break, and then it's the 1st of March, which is Zero Discrimination Day. Okay, then the 31st of March, so you get two in one month. Trans Day of Visibility. I can't believe this. Then you have International Asexual Day, which is on the 6th of April. And then you get one more week again, and it's the second Wednesday in April, International Day of Pink. And you're probably thinking, what is International Day of Pink? Well, International Day of Pink is a worldwide anti-bullying and anti-homophobia event. Okay, so then you go into the following week, 26th of April, Lesbian Visibility Day. Because lesbians don't fit into any of the other LBGDQ communities. Okay, so now there's a couple of weeks break and we're going into International Day Against Homophobia, Transphobia and Biphobia on the 17th of May. Two days after that, you have A Gender Pride Day. And then five days after that, on the 24th of May, you have Pan and Pan Romantic Awareness Day. We're not done. It's the month of almost June. And you know what that means. Pride is around the corner. Pride is a celebration. Yeah, that's what it's about. Just, just pointing the obvious, okay? A Romantic Visibility Day. Non-binary People's Day on the 14th of July. Surprised they didn't try to take the 4th of July, to be honest. This is just as confusing as the entire amount of awareness that's supposed to be around genderism. You have Non-Binary Awareness Week. This week is starting the Sunday or the Monday surrounding the 14th of July, which also correlates with the 16th of July, which is Drag Day. Is anyone else catching up with this? I'm so damn confused. So nothing in August surprisingly, but then you hop into September 16th to the 22nd, and again, Bisexual Awareness Week. <sighs> Wait, how many is that? Now that's from the 16th to the 22nd, but don't forget that the 23rd, so that's not included in that week, which is Celebrate Bisexual Day. I'm giving you all of this so that you don't have to look. Then you have another little tiny break until the 8th of October, which is Lesbians Day. You have just a couple of days break before the 11th of October. Recharge that battery real quick. Then it's National Coming Out Day. Gotta give those kids a chance. Won't somebody please think of the children? Okay, so then you go from the 11th of October, National Coming Out Day. And then on the third Wednesday of October, it's Pronouns Day. Because you know, the Zers gotta get their say too. Now this can fall in the same week as Gender Fluid Visibility Week. That's the 17th to the 24th of October. And then you have no time to rest because then it's Ace Week, which is the last week of October. You're probably thinking, what is Ace Week? It is a week to promote the awareness of those on the asexual spectrum. In that same week, on the 26th of October, you have Intersex Awareness Day. I'm very important. Uh, I have many leather-bound books. All month of November, Trans Awareness Month. Good stuff. Transparence Day. There's nothing transparent about them. And that's on the first Sunday of November. In Trans Awareness Month, you have Trans Awareness Week, 13th to the 19th, even though it's in the same month. On the 8th of November, you have Intersex Day of Remembrance, followed by the 20th of November, Transgender Day of Remembrance, who have been murdered as a result of transphobia. I have a feeling they're not being honest with that one. And you know who's definitely not allowed to talk about this? This one. She's not allowed in because she's trans. It's an interesting story, don't you think? Kind of crazy. There are just as many Christian days of awareness as there are trans days of awareness, but let's look at the difference between the two. How often are you seeing this anywhere? No, because this is everywhere. They said that today would spike controversy between the trans community and people who have got a religious background. It doesn't need to be that way at all. But this was done with malice. I guess it does actually fall within it because the trans movement is mutilating children. This is a genuine thing that is happening. Anyone who is detransitioning is not allowed to have a voice. Why does the community hate people who detransition? It doesn't make an awful lot of sense if you're all about 
Love is love and love and acceptance. Especially whenever you're wanting to be accepted, but yet you want to discard your own. Really does show how entitled you are. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining me for this episode of Trauma Pond HQ. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please like this video, subscribe to the channel, leave me a comment down below, tell me whatever you want. It's not going to affect me. I'm already traumatized. Okay, guys, thank you so much for joining in, and I will see you next time for another episode of Trauma Pond HQ. Mwah.